power meter is a big investment, but frankly, it's one of the best investments you can make to improve your performance on the bike. So if you've just bought one or you're thinking about buying one, here are a few things that you need to know to get you started and some tips for when you're on the bike. First though, let's remind ourselves what we mean when we're talking about power in a cycling context. Power is how much force your legs produce and how quickly you're turning the pedals. To calculate it, your power meter needs to measure both force and cadence. I've got the Shimano Dura-Ace power meter on my bike, which like the Ultegra version, has strain gauges on both left and right cranks, which calculate the force you're putting out by detecting minute deflections in the metal crank. It then also has a cadence sensor to measure how fast you're pedaling. So force multiplied by RPM equals power output, displayed in real time. Now, while your power meter should, like this one, be waterproof and dustproof and mudproof and generally robust, they are really sensitive instruments. And so there is one quick task you need to do before every ride, which is to zero it. Now, that's just like when you're using your kitchen scales. You need to make sure they're reading zero before you put anything on them. It's a very quick, very simple task. You can either do it on your head unit or you can do it, in this case, on the crank itself. Just zero it and you're good to go. Now, accuracy and reliability of your power data is really important. The more you use it, the more you'll come to realize that. And it does sometimes mean that comparing your data gathered from different power meters is open to error. This is accurate to just one and a half percent, whereas that Peloton bike gathering dust in the corner of your spare room can be out by as much as 10% or more. When you do get out on the road, you will see quite quickly that just riding along doesn't really tell you very much. Your numbers will fluctuate rapidly in front of you. And then when you get home and you download your data, you'll see a fairly meaningless, very spiky looking line. So what you want is to turn that meaningless spiky line into something that tells you that you've done a certain amount of work at certain intensities and for certain duration that will all make you better. Think of it like going to the gym. You want to build strength, so you do reps of lifting known weights in specific exercises. What you don't do, though, is to walk in and start picking up random weights, doing one rep of this, one rep of that, and then walking out and congratulating yourself on a job well done. In cycling, then, a power meter is effectively just telling you what weights you're lifting. So to start with, you need to find out what weights you can actually lift. You need to know how fit you are. And then you can find out all of your training zones. So to do that, you need to do a fitness test. And there are many, many different ones out there. Perhaps the simplest and still really effective is a 20 minute all out effort, which sounds really nice and it is. Basically, you just need to find a stretch of road where you continually put power through your pedals. So avoid downhills, avoid sharp corners, and avoid road traffic at all costs. Once you've got your results, you simply input them into like an online calculator. Shimano have got their Connect Lab, there are others out there, and that will then calculate those training zones. It's not an exact science unless you're in a lab hooked up to all sorts of other gizmos, but it's a pretty blooming good place to start. Oh, I'm in a massive gear. <laughs> You will need one more set of numbers though. You need to know your heart rate data because your heart rate data is what actually tells you how hard you're trying. And when you see it in tandem with your power data, that is a really potent combination. It lets you know fundamentally when you're improving. So having a lower heart rate for a given power, but it also tells you when you're tired. So when you're trying really hard, but your heart rate just isn't going up the same as it normally would do when you're fresh. We've covered a lot of ground and we haven't yet started talking about training, which is a huge topic, but here are a few key tips. In the first instance, training to specific powers will often mean feeling like you're holding yourself back. So, as part of a balanced training plan, you'll want to do quite a lot of steady riding, zone two training. 
and sticking in zone two, particularly up climbs, can feel painfully slow. But yeah, if you go too hard, like for example, getting out of saddle to stamp up a little rise in the road, you're potentially undermining the effectiveness of your zone two training. But you're also not doing hard training either. You're back to that middle ground of going into the gym and doing really weird stuff. Now bear in mind, it can make group rides difficult, but we will come on to that in a moment. God, this is slow, isn't it? Making your steady rides truly steady will make you fitter, but it will also help keep your body fresher for when you're doing your hard intervals, and then you can make them really hard. It's called polarized training, and as a concept, it's been around for years and years. You won't need to do all that much high intensity work, but when you do, make it count. Stick to your power zones, and then really get the effort out. By sticking to your zones though, you may well find that actually the beginning of intervals feels a lot easier than you're used to. I'm currently 30 seconds into a VO2 max interval, but the idea is that by maintaining a consistent power throughout, you improve the quality. So if you're doing a three minute long effort, ideally you want your first minute and your last minute to have the same average powers. And again, ideally you want your first interval to have the same average power as your last one, although that could well be a tall order. I'm currently 2 minutes 30 into a VO2 max interval. Personally, I find having the numbers in front of me really motivating. You've got a target, all you've got to do is stick to it until your stopwatch says you can relax. First, you might find it quite difficult to stick to a specific power. Those numbers have a habit of jumping all over the place, but with time and practice, you will learn to pedal much more smoothly, and then you'll be able to hold your target powers. Look, here's a little experiment for you, okay? So, I'm currently riding at 60 RPM for 300 watts, and I have been doing for five minutes. And my heart rate is currently 143. Whereas, if I do the same thing, but at a cadence of 120 RPM for 300 watts, my heart rate is 165. Clearly showing then that whilst the power output is the same, it's got a demonstrably different effect on my body. Same power, different effect on my body. So it's clear, that low and high cadence work is a really good way of introducing different training stimuli and a bit of variety. You know what they say about variety, not only is it the spice of life, it's also the spice of training. Going back to number motivation for a moment, always keep trying to nudge your power numbers ever upwards. Think of them like a carrot, like dangling on a stick, right, not as nutrition. My favorite session was always 90 minutes, zone four. And I'd always keep the route the same. And every time I revisited that session, I'd try and average just a couple of watts higher. And over time, it becomes a really effective way of progressing. But a word of warning, don't become fixated on just one intensity and duration, like trying to boost your FTP. So on most training software, you'll see a power curve where all of your personal best powers for any given duration are plotted on one graph. And just always try and bear this bigger picture in mind. You wanna be improving across the board, not just for 20 minutes. Now, if you think that riding with a power meter might make you slightly antisocial, you could be right. I mean, if you're sticking to your training zones, it can be difficult to find a riding buddy who will stay alongside you when you're creeping up a rise or pedaling flat out down a descent. In spite of everything we've said so far about how amazing it is to train with a power meter, sometimes you still just need to ride your bike. Go out with a group, and not look at your numbers. Go for a fast group ride and then only check your data when you get home. And that's because, well firstly, variety, as we've said, is the spice of training, but also you don't want to become a slave to your numbers. You don't want to actually end up being restricted by them. Sometimes you just got to go out as well and enjoy riding your bike. Training is an art, 
and also a science. And to master it will take you more than a lifetime, but use these points as a guide to get you going. Now, remember as well that your power meter could well unlock all sorts of other interesting bits of data for you. These Shimano ones have something called vector analysis, and we'll actually do a video on that and on the more advanced metrics very soon indeed. In the meantime though, just remember those golden rules. So know what your power meter is there for, know what your numbers are, use a heart rate monitor as well, and stick to your zones. If you're going easy, go easy. Easy. If you're going hard, go hard. And then lastly, remember as well, sometimes you've got to ignore it. Thank you very much Shimano for providing us with the power meter today. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up.